Hi, I'm George. Welcome to Pablo Spot. Today, I will push the Python code that I've written in the previous episode into AWS Lambda function and set up the necessary AWS infrastructure. Let's start coding. The AWS Lambda function that I'll be creating today will involve containers. So because I'm reusing the same set of code that I've written previously, I have created the sim link to the directory of the previous episode. And this is what I'm using as my workspace for today. So what I will do next is to create my Docker file inside the Lambda directory. So, and then I'm going to use a multi-stage configuration for my Docker file. I'm going to use the smallest possible image for my Python base image. And now I'll create my build stage. We've actually copied both our requirements.txt and requirements-test.txt in here. And then I've run two pip install commands in here. And then now I'll set up the final stage of my Docker configuration. And now just a couple of things to point out with the final stage. So line 22 actually does a copy of the function directory from this image, which in this case is only the Python module specific to the application. And then line 23 is just basically pulling out a library that would allow runtime execution for our Lambda function. The one thing that's missing is the entry.sh. So all we need to do is basically create that file in here. So this allows testing of the Lambda function locally. Now we go back to our Docker config file, save our changes. One final thing to point out is this last item in here. The first part of that string references the Python script and then the handler, which is the first point of execution when the Lambda function is called. So now what I need to do next is to try to create my Docker image. So I'll open my terminal and then cd to the Lambda directory. Actually, I just realized before we move on, notice that there's this directory in here that gets created when we ran our test locally. So what I want to do is create a ignore file to make sure that this doesn't get pushed when we create our Docker image. So we should now be ready to run our Docker build. So this error is happening because uh, of a syntax problem and then run our build again. So my Docker build has completed successfully. There's my image. So now let's try running this Docker container. So we're gonna try to fix that. Save our changes and run our Docker build again. Run the Docker container again. And then let's open a new terminal and then run a curl command that calls that Lambda function. So let's go back to our previous terminal and see what happened. So we're actually getting a, an error in here. So let's go back to our code, update our requirements.txt. Cancel this. That build was successful. Let's try starting the container again. Open the other terminal and then run our curl again. The, the error message that we see here is just an indication of some parameters that are not provided during the call. So I think we're fine at this point. So let's clear this. The next step is that I can start looking at how I can push my Docker image into AWS ECR. Now that we have the script done, let's open our terminal and run this script. So we've got an error in here. So let's fix that. So that script completed successfully. Before we proceed to the next steps, I need to make some minor adjustments to my Lambda function and add some logging. 
save my changes and then run my build and publish image script again So now that I have my updated image pushed to ECR, I'll start writing my infrastructure resources that will put everything together. So we have to find a local tags in here, so let's create locals.tf. For the role property, I'll create a new IAM role resource. And for the assume role policy, I'll create a policy document data reference. So now I'll update the assume role policy with that reference. I need to update the role on my Lambda function. I also need to provide my Lambda function permissions. I need to define a data reference to the policy document that defines all the permissions. Before we continue, it's probably best to create a separate TF file for, our, for all our data references. So in order to set my policy document with least privilege, I need to create the IAM user resource that I want the access key generation to apply to. Now that the IAM user is created, I can then go ahead and update my data reference Now let's go back to the IAM role policy and update the policy property with the reference to this resource. For the image URI property of my Lambda function, I will create data reference for the ECR image that I need to pull in and use. So since we've got two new variables defined in here, I'm going to start creating my variables.tf. So what I need to create next are the CloudWatch related resources. I've created a variable for the scheduled expression, so I'll update my variables at TF. I'll create the event target. The ARN property here needs to point to the Lambda function. And the rule property will point to the AWS CloudWatch event rule. And then these will be the properties sent to the Lambda function as parameters. Let's update our variables.tf. And then back to our main.tf. Instead of passing input transformer, we're going to try passing input. So now what I need to do next is to create my providers.tf and my input tf bars. So the image tag that I need to use here needs to match with the image tag that's available in ECR. Save all changes. And then at this point, we are in a position to try running our Terraform commands. Terraform plan was successful. Let's go ahead and run our apply. Terraform apply was successful. So I'll connect to my web console and do a spot check. So as suggested in the message, let's go ahead and update the permissions of our Lambda function. Save our changes and then let's run plan and apply again. The apply has completed successfully, so now let's verify. So the error message is gone. My Lambda function now has permission to CloudWatch. So I tried running the Lambda function manually using the test option in here. To fix the issue that we're seeing here, let's have a look at the, the script itself. The script shows a conditional statement on running the AWS Runtime Emulator. What I can do to fix this is to override the entry point property of my Lambda function resource in my main.tf.
save my change and then what I also need to do is review the permission of my lambda function to make sure that the resources are set properly save my changes and then lastly if we go back to our main.tf all the way down to our watch event target this event key is actually not necessary so we just get rid of that let's go ahead and run our terraform plan and apply so our plan and apply has run successfully now let me go back to my browser and do another manual test of my lambda function So that seems to have worked. So now let's go to IAM and check that the access key is created. So there's our access key. Let's review the integration setup of the Lambda function. The integration with CloudWatch events or the event bridge is missing here. So let's go back to our code and have a look at our Lambda permission. So in my main.tf, I'm going to search for Lambda permission. So it's not returning any results. So let's go ahead and create that missing resource. I need to set my Lambda function timeout property and set it to 30 seconds. And now let's run our Terraform plan and apply. So let's go back to our Lambda function on our browser and have a look at the setup. So now as you can see, integration between my CloudWatch events and my Lambda function has been properly set up. So my CloudWatch scheduler will run every 5 minutes. While we wait for that period to occur, let me show you one thing. There is a provider available in Terraform that allows for generating Docker image while you run your Terraform code and pushing the same image into ECR. So let's go back to our code. I will update my providers.tf. The address property of our provider will need to point to AWS ECR endpoint and then our username and password will need to be an ECR authorization token. So first the address. For the account ID, we will use a data reference to the AWS caller identity. For the username and password, we'll pull out data reference to the AWS ECR authorization token. Now that our provider is set up, I will go ahead and create the resource for building and registering my Docker image. The name property for this resource will be the same as what we set as image URL on our Lambda function. And then the build property for this resource points to where all your Docker artifacts are sitting. So in our case, it's inside Lambda directory. We need to change the image URI property of our Lambda function to reference the name property of this resource. Save our changes. So before I run my changes, let's go to my AWS web console and verify that the access key generation has run. And as you can see, one access key was generated at 7.09 and then 5 minutes later, a new key was generated. Now let's go back to our code. Before I run my Terraform plan and apply to capture the changes that I've done for the Docker registry image, let's update the input TF vars and change the image tag. Let's change this to latest and then run plan and apply. With that plan and apply complete, let's go to my web console and verify that all the things are still intact and that my access key generator is still working. So let's go to my web console. Let's go to image. And as you can see, the image URI is actually pointing to latest tag. And now let's run a quick test. So that ran successfully. Now let's go to IAM. Access keys have been generated at 750, so this is probably the one that's created by the scheduler. And then this is the one that we ran. And that's it. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Send me some likes and share this video if you find it useful and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, see ya.